Hey guys, Christina Poncher here, and you're watching True School Sports. It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing game has been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BC, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, if you guys hear any sound effects in the background, that's just the sound of the beautiful sound of the of the South Florida rain. But don't mind that. We're, we're gonna get to this. We're, we're gonna get to this work. We're gonna get to this boxing talk. So let's talk about it. You know, Shakur Stevenson has officially moved out of the 130 division. He's no longer a super featherweight anymore. So what this does now is it is now two belts are vacant. There's two belts vacant, and then the, and the WBA champion is Hector Luis Garcia, and the IBF champion is Joe Cordina. So what will the super featherweight division? What will life be like? after Shakur Stevenson in this particular weight class after Shakur Stevenson um, has now moved up. Well, let's talk about it. So if we take a look at the WBC rankings right now. We got in the top three, we got Oshaki Foster, who's been a, a, a really good fighter, who's, a, who's called out Shakur Stevenson plenty of times, uh, who's been slowly grinding his way um, on the low, picking up good wins, uh, showing himself to be a fighter of quality. You know, he's worked his way up to the number one uh, ranking position in the WBC. And um, I'm looking at him getting a title shot, you know. Oshaki Foster's 19-2. and two. Uh, He's beating guys like Miguel Roman and Alberto Mercado. I, I watched both those fights on uh, Ring City USA when he fought there. That's, that's how I found out who he was. And uh, he's a good good, good boxer. Uh, can box, can move. as uh, a slightly above average puncher at best. But, um, you know, I like to see Oshaki Foster get a shot. Just a, a really, really solid fight. He's ranked number one. You got Robinson Consensal, who I really believe shouldn't be. I, I don't think he should have his number two ranking removed because Shakur Stevenson missed the weight and he could have taken the easy way out. And he still he pretty much saved the show. He could have taken the easy way out, but he wanted to challenge himself. So I, I, I really don't feel like he should have his number two ranking removed. But that's just me. But you got him at number two, and you got Oscar Valdez at three. So you got Oscar Valdez ranked number three in both of the WBC and WBO. Um, I'm looking at Oscar Valdez getting a title shot. You know straight away you know he he's held the, the WBC title so that will give him some standing with the WBC to go ahead and get an immediate title shot now of course Stevenson isn't there he has a high ranking on top of that um, he's number three in the WBO Consensio just lost and Consensio is number two he like Consensio is the guy between Valdez and the number one guys in the WBO and WBC respectively so look at look at look for Valdez to get a shot and then you know you got other guys in the weight class you got Albert Bell who is a guy that nobody's anxious to fight, but you know probably one of the better thirty pounders out there. So this this, this weight class is wide open. You know, um, Joe Cordina is coming off of a sensational win against Kenichi Ogawa, um, a career best performance where he really put it together on the night. And a lot of people are looking at him now as maybe one of the guys to take the reins and, and go dominate the division. You got him. You got Hector Luis Garcia, who's had a banner year, um, beating up on Chris Colbert, beating up on. Roger Gutierrez become champion. So, uh, 130 is a great weight class. Uh, you got other uh, fighters like Otar Aronosian. My my favorite fighter in the weight class is Otar Aronosian, the dark horse of the division. A guy that I think should be getting a title shot soon. So, life after Shakur Stevenson in this weight class is going to get a lot interesting. Um, who's the best fighter in the weight class? That's probably the question that everybody wants to know. Who 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 is the best fighter? We don't know. Truthfully, we don't know. Um, you know, there's, there. I think, in a perfect world, we would get Joe Cordina versus Hector Luis Garcia right away for, for a unification fight, so we, we can start getting some clarity. But I'm not so sure how realistic that is because of all the fake politics in boxing, with you know, Hector Garcia being with you know who he's with and Joe Cordina being who he's with. But I would like to see it happen. I think I think that would be a really intriguing fight because we see Hector Luis Garcia um, fight well as a boxer. And fight well as a as a pressure fighter. We've seen Joe Cordina kind of evolve his style and adapt it more to the pro game, and it all culminated when he knocked out Ogawa with the right hand. Joe Cordina to me is really the guy that I want to see. How far can he go in this weight class? Um, because when you look at the IBF rankings, he's taking on um, Shaka Rachmanov, which are, which is a, bit, a fight I've talked about. Rachmanov is a very strong, sturdy guy who's been in there with uh, guys like jo Jojo Diaz and not an easy guy to beat, not an easy guy to look good against. And, and, and Joe Cordina has one ahead and uh, he's challenging his first title defense. So uh, it's a good first defense for him. I think 
that fight's gonna tell us a lot about him. Um, another guy at 130 that people talk about a lot is is Archie Sharp. You know, Archie Sharp is one of these British fighters that uh, has been chatting up a storm about wanting to fight Shakur Stevenson. Um, he felt like he could beat him. He's ranked number one in the WBO, so we might get Archie Sharp versus Oscar Valdez sooner rather than later, you know, and as it stands now, Archie Sharp is 22-0 with nine knockouts, so not a big puncher. Uh, hasn't really beat anybody too great. The, the best guy he's probably beaten on his resume so far was uh, Jeff Ofri, who many of you guys may remember. Jeff Ofri had a good run in the MTK Global Golden Contract Tournament like three years ago. He beat him. That was probably his best win on paper. And other than that, you know, and, th and that's a domestic level British win. He hasn't really done much besides that. So, uh, you know, he's definitely someone to watch in this division because of his high ranking. Uh, Lamont Roach, you know, he's ranked number one in the WBA. He's a Golden Boy fighter. Um, he's been a, he was a guy that lost to Jamel Herring uh, many years ago, and it has been a disappointment. But you know, he's been picking up some good wins. He beat um, what was it Alvarado? He beat one of the Alvarados uh, last year in, in a career best performance. So, you know, 130 has a lot of intriguing fighters to me. Uh, a lot of intriguing guys. A lot of guys to look out for. You know, from Otar Aranosian, who I think is the most, in my opinion, one of the most exciting fighters to watch in this division. He's the guy that if you're looking at this division for fighters that you never heard of that might go on and make some noise and, and, are, and are exciting to watch, that's the guy you need to watch out for is Otar Aranosian. Uh, just picked up a good win recently against um, Cesar Rocky Juarez. You know, um, him, you know, you got Lamont Roach, you got Oshaki Foster, you still got Robinson Consensal who's going to be in the fold, you still got Oscar Valdez, you still got... Albert Bell, um, Albert Bell, by the way, a guy who's coming out, to, who's coming to you live and direct from, you know, uh, I think he's from Ohio, right? Albert Bell, where's he from? I think I'm pretty sure Albert Bell is from Toledo, Ohio. Yeah, from Toledo, Ohio. Very long guy, uh, not a big puncher, but uh, you know, very tall for the weight class. A six foot tall, 130 pounder. A guy that has a 73 inch reach. Um, just waiting for his opportunity, you know. He did beat Andy Vences three years ago, so he does have a, a quality one on his resume. So yeah, that's what it is. That, that's that's pretty much right now my breakdown of the super featherweight division after post Shakur Stevenson. You know, there's a lot of uh, good fighters. There's a lot of good fighters with questions um, to be to be answered, and even the champions got to answer some questions. So. Um, Definitely be following this weight class very closely as it progresses here on True School Sports. But let me know what you guys think. What's the fight you want to see at 130 now that Shakur Stevenson is not there? I'll, I'll tell you this. For me, the fight I want to see the most at 130 is uh, I want to see Hector Luis Garcia defend his title against the number three ranked contender, Otar Aranosi. And I think that'd be a great fight because Otar fights with a swagger, a confidence. He's like... Um, he, might, he reminds me a lot of Lomachenko. He's a more cockier Lomachenko. Um, very great personality. Very fun to watch. Definitely worth everybody's time. I think him or Hector, Hector Luis Garcia would be an absolute war. So to me, that's the fight I want to see. But apart from that fight, probably Oshaki Foster versus Oscar Valdez. I'd like to see Oscar Valdez fight another skilled boxer. Not as good as Shakur, but another skilled boxer and see what he can do with that. And, see, and, and make Oscar Valdez have to earn his title. Because I feel like if he fights Archie Sharp, He's gonna beat him, and beat him pretty convincingly. But uh, that's my that's that's my take on 130. Leave yours down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just kidding, Daniel. So until next time, take care. I think uh, True School Sports. He's the truth. One of the best YouTube. The best. Ooh, the, the number one. Number one. Brandon, you've been there, man, and you're building up a good following Thank with you. us. Thank you. And I'm proud to be a part of what you're doing, too. Mm -hmm. You are spectacular. And, uh, you know. Thank you, man. All the best to, to school boxing and yeah. keep up the good work.